for round six we're going to be single crocheting around we're going to skip over the leaf each time so right now I'm right next to the leaf I'm going to skip that first and then single crochet into the next stitch of the body and then single crochet into each of the next three stitches here skip over the next leaf and then single crochet into each of the last four single crochets so we've gone from 10 single crochets to 8 single crochets I'm going to work four more rounds, rounds seven through ten, just single crocheting all the way around in the same continuous manner as we did before. So just make sure you keep track of your stitches. Each of these next four rounds will be eight single crochets. For our last round, we're going to seam this closed. Since we're behind the work, we're going to single crochet into each of the next two stitches first. That'll put us in a more even spot. We are going to seam this closed now, but before we do that, we need to stuff the stem. And we're stuffing the stem because it adds stability. The flower doesn't have a lot of support, and so it will most likely just fall over so we're adding the stuffing in here to give that flower some support if you want some extra support you could also put pipe cleaners in there Alright, I didn't think I'm happy with that. I wanted to make sure that the base had enough stuffing, but I don't want the whole thing to be too puffy and the white showing through all my stitches. I still wanted to just take the shape that I created for it. I just want to add a little bit of the support with the stuffing. We're going to slip stitch it closed. So I'm going to line up my stitches here. If I look on the left side, I have two of the V-shapes together. Then I have two V-shapes together, two V-shapes together, and there's the last set right there. The stitch where I worked my last single crochet, I'm going to insert into that and into the corresponding stitch behind it. And complete a slip stitch. Then I'll insert into the next stitch as well as the corresponding stitch behind it and complete a slip stitch. Insert into the next stitch through both layers and work a slip stitch and then one more stitch there on the end and I'm going to fasten off and I'll pull up on that loop to break it and 
the stem with leaves is complete. Time to get the flower worked and then add it to our stem. We're going to start the flower with a slip knot. I have my brown yarn here. And we're going to chain five. Then slip stitch join to the first chain to form a ring the same way we did when we worked the base. Now we have a hole in the center to work into. I'm going to chain one and then turn. Usually we don't turn here, but the way that I need to work my stitches to get the texture of the sunflower, this is just the way that I'm going to do it. My tail end, I'm going to tighten that hole up a little bit, and then I'm going to pull it over the front to the left so that it's sitting on top of my chains, and I can still crochet over it. So here's my tail end over here on the right, and I'm just going to bring it over to the left and lay it on top of my chains. I'm going to work a single crochet into the ring, insert my hook into the center ring, yarn over, pull through, two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. And then I'm going to work a treble crochet into the center ring. Same stitch as we worked on the leaf, yarn over two times, insert into the center, yarn over, pull through, four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And we're going to alternate these two stitch patterns, single crochet, treble crochet. When we work the next single crochet, it's going to bring that treble crochet down to the same height and pop it out on the back side. And there you go, there's the texture right there, created sort of like a bobble, but it's from the treble crochet popping out. And I'm going to continue alternating, so I've done single crochet, treble crochet, single crochet. The next one will be a treble crochet. And I want to work all the way around until I have 12 stitches worked, making sure to work over the tail end the whole entire time. And there's my last stitch. It's a treble crochet. I have 12 stitches in total. I'm going to slip stitch join to the very first single crochet of the round. And now round one is complete. We're looking at the wrong side, the back side. And if you turn it to the other side where all the texture is, that's going to be the front of the flower. So for round two, we're going to work it on the same side as the first. We don't want to turn our work because we want to continue to get that textured pattern on the other side. So we're just going to start with a chain one. And now we're going to increase from 12 stitches to 24 stitches in the same stitch pattern. So in the first stitch here, I'm going to work a single crochet. And in the same stitch as well, I'm going to work a treble crochet. We're going to work two stitches into every stitch, and we're going to do it with a single crochet and then a treble crochet, all worked into the same stitch. Next stitch there, single crochet, followed by a treble crochet. Continue working all the way around in this pattern until you get back to the beginning. We'll have 24 stitches and then we'll slip stitch join.
There's my last stitch of the round. I have 24 stitches, slip stitch join to the very first stitch of the round. And now I can fasten off my brown, pull up on that loop to break it. I'm going to turn my work around to the front, insert into that same stitch that I slip stitched to from the wrong side to the right side, yarn over it and pull that tail end to the back. Now it's just easier to weave in my ends later. We'll secure that hole in the center closed at the end. But now we're going to add our yellow to start our petals. And if you've worked my Sunflower 2.0 before, this is going to be a modified version of that because I want to have two levels of petals so it's more dimensional when it's sitting up on the pot. I'm going to insert my hook into any treble crochet stitch, so any one of them that has a bump directly above that, I'm going to insert my hook, but I'm going to do it into the front loop only. So by picking up both loops, that is picking up the stitch. I just want to pick up the front loop on my crochet hook, because I'm going to work another layer and that's going to be worked into the back loop. So I want just the front loop on my hook, so find the little bump, directly above that is the V-shaped stitch, and I just want to pick up the front loop closest to me. I'm going to take my yellow yarn, I've made a loop here, tail end that I can weave in, put that on my hook, pull it through, and then with the working yarn, I'm going to chain one. I'm going to single crochet into this very first stitch. You're going to work these stitches the same way as normal. You're just going to work them into one of the legs from the stitch only. Skip the next stitch, which is a single crochet. And in the next stitch, which is a treble crochet, we're going to half double crochet, chain two half double crochet. Yarn over, insert your hook, into the front loop of that stitch only, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops, chain two, half double crochet into the same exact stitch, skip the next stitch, and in the next stitch work a single crochet into the front loop only. So we're not picking up the whole stitch, we're working into the front loop of that stitch only. And we're going to continue around. So we've just single crocheted there, we're going to skip the next stitch. In the front loop of the next one, half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. Skip the next stitch, single crochet into the front loop of the next stitch, skip the next stitch, in the front loop, half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. Continue in pattern all the way around. When you finish, you'll have worked a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet over here, and then we'll slip stitch join to the first stitch of the round. And now I've made it around, I'm going to pull that tail end a little bit, and the base for our petals has just been finished there in round three. Round four, we're going to work the petals. Chain one. The petals are going to be worked into the chain two spaces where we worked a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. So into that very next chain space, we're going to work three double crochets. then chain two, and work three more double crochets into that same exact chain space. Then we'll slip stitch join to the next stitch, which is a single crochet. 
this slip stitch right here starts our repeat for the round. In the next chain two space, we're going to work another petal, three double crochets there. Chain two, three double crochets into the same exact stitch. And then we begin again, slip stitch into the next stitch, which is a single crochet, work a petal in the next chain space. Continue all the way around. You'll have one petal worked in this last chain space, and then I'll show you where to join. And there's my last petal of the round and I want to slip stitch join to the same stitch I did below in the round before. So I'm going to insert into that same exact single crochet down there. Here's my round right now below that and complete a slip stitch and then I'll fasten off. Pull up on the loop to break it and then bring that tail end to the wrong side. And that's gonna be the first layer of our sunflower. I'm gonna go ahead and weave in some ends on my flower, just because this is the easiest time to get to it. The center ring, I'm going to do it the same way as I did on the base. The tail end is coming out over here to the left. I'm gonna continue counterclockwise until I get back to the beginning and then push through two more stitches. And then I can hold the fabric in my left hand and tighten that hole up. And now I'm just going to secure that in with two more passes. The brown here, I'm going to secure it vertically there, three passes. The yellow, I'm going to weave this one here into the bulkiness of the petal there. And then I'll weave the other one into the bulkiness of the other petal below it. And I'll do three passes for each one of those. And I'm just going to fasten off all my ends here. And I'm ready to get started on the second level to my sunflower. 
I'm going to have the petals staggering the ones that are there. And we're going to work into that back loop of the brown piece that we worked into the front loop. Now we'll work into the back loop. So looking at the back of your work, you can see where the base of the yellow stitches were added on. It's a little bit tougher to see the back loop now, but you can still see that ridge that it has created around there. That is the back loop. I'm going to find the stitch where I've worked a petal into. So down here I can see the back loop only right there across from where I worked the two half double crochets and the chain right there. That's worked in the front loop. I'm going to go to the back loop. And you can tell where your stitches are because the stitches that we left unworked from that round still have their V shape right there. And they're a little bit smaller, more scrunched up because we've pulled the excess yarn to work our stitches in. So here's the half double crochet chain two. Directly behind that is the back loop only. And I'm going to put that on my hook. Here's my yellow yarn, made a loop with a tail end long enough to weave in, put that loop on my hook, pull it through, and then with the working yarn here, I'm going to chain one. In this stitch, I want to work a single crochet, so I'm just going to insert there into the back loop only and complete a single crochet. I'm going to skip the next stitch. And into the back loop of the next stitch, I'm going to work a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. Then I'll skip the next stitch, and into the back loop only of the next stitch, I will single crochet. Skip the next stitch, in the back loop only of the next stitch, half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. You're going to continue working in this pattern all the way around and if you get lost just make sure your stitches are opposite to what they were in the first layer. So here in the first layer where we have the half double crochet chain two half double crochet behind that is a single crochet. Here on the first layer we had a single crochet behind that is going to be the half double crochet chain two half double crochet. Once we get to the beginning, we'll slip stitch join. and the first round of the back layer is complete. In this next round here, I'm gonna do a bit of increasing, where in the top layer, we worked a slip stitch in between the petals. Here, we're gonna work two single crochets. So into this very first stitch, I'm gonna work two single crochets. Then in the next chain two space, we're going to work a petal the same way as we did before. Three double crochets. Chain two. Three double crochets into the same chain space. And then into the next stitch, instead of slip stitching, we're going to work two single crochets in there. Then the next chain space, we work a petal, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. And then in the next stitch, two single crochets. And you're going to continue working all the way around. Once we're back to the beginning, we'll slip stitch join to the first single crochet.
Back to the beginning here, slip stitch join to the very first single crochet of the round. Now the layers are finished and you'll find that your back layer is staggered in between the petals from the front layer. I'm going to go ahead and fasten off here the yellow. Pull up on that loop to break it. Pull that tail end to the back. And now I'm going to work one more layer to this, but it's going to be a separate piece that I'm going to attach. And the only reason why I'm going to do that is because this is my vision for the sunflower. If you let the sunflower petals just be, eventually they're going to curl up like this. You can block your flower to get it to lay flat or you can work a back layer which is what I'm about to do. It will be behind the second layer and it will just connect to the chain spaces of the first petal. That will not only force my petals to stay upright, it'll also give me a clean back. So let me show you how to do this last piece. I'm going to start with my yellow yarn and make a slip knot. Then I'll work a chain five. Slip stitch join to the first chain to form a ring. Chain one. I'm gonna hold my tail end behind my chain so I can crochet over it. And in that center ring, I'm gonna work 12 half double crochets. I'm going to slip stitch join to the first half double crochet of the round, chain one. I'm going to increase in the second round from 12 half double crochets to 24, simply by working two half double crochets into each stitch all the way around. I'm going to slip stitch join to the first half double crochet of the round and then I can hold the fabric in my right hand and pull on the short tail end to close up that hole and I'll better close it up when I am ready to weave in my ends here. This circle that we've created here I want it to be about the same size or maybe a little bit larger than my beginning brown circle for the flower. So you can hold your circle up and just make sure that it measures a little bit larger. If you need to adjust it, maybe it's too big, then try working these in single crochet. If it's too small, you can try going up a hook size or working in double crochet. I'm going to now make the sunflower petals. So we need to start with our setup row, chain one, single crochet into this first stitch skip the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, chain two, half double crochet into the same stitch, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, skip the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, chain two, half double crochet into the same stitch, continue all the way around. And now I'm back to the beginning, slip stitch join to the first stitch. To start this next round, chain one, work three double crochets into that next chain two space. Chain two, 
chain one only. If you are a little unsure of your center ring being the correct size, then you may not want to weave in your ends yet. You may want to wait till you get to the end. You can turn the flower inside out and then weave in your ends there. But if you know that it's going to fit well, then you can go ahead and take this opportunity to weave in your flower ends, all three of them here. The two that I finished off, the top layer, and then the center ring from this other layer. And the only reason why I caution that it might not be the right size, if it is just about the same size or a little tiny bit larger than your center ring on your flower, it'll be fine. But if it's smaller or larger than that, then it's going to pull the petals in a weird way and it's not going to lay flat. I've already worked my flower up several times, so I'm going to go ahead and weave in my ends. But if you're unsure, go ahead and finish working this next round with me and then you'll have a small gap where you could turn your flower inside out and weave in your ends then. All right, now we're going to join as we go the petals of our flower from this new layer we're working to the top layer of the other piece. So here's the front side with the textured side facing me. I'm gonna flip that over and I'm going to join the petals from this new layer to the petals on the bottom now, which are the ones from the front side. The second layer here is going to be sandwiched in the middle. So here I have three double crochets, chain one. The join counts as our second chain. So I'm going to find a chain one space from the petal from the front layer, insert my hook right into it, and complete a single crochet. Then I'll go back to my top layer here, my new piece, and work the last three double crochets of this petal. Slip stitch into the next stitch. Work three double crochets into the next chain two space. Chain one only. Find the next petal from that front layer, the chain two space there. So I'm skipping over the middle layer and I'm going to the chain space of the next petal and I'm going to insert my hook and complete a single crochet. Then I'll go back to my top layer here and finish the three double crochets of this petal. Slip stitch into the next stitch three double crochets into the next chain two space. Chain one only. Skipping that petal there in the middle, I'm gonna go to the next petal of the front layer, insert my hook into the chain space and complete a single crochet. Then go back to my top piece and work three more double crochets. slip stitch into the next stitch and we'll start all over again. 
So as you work, it will sort of separate itself a little bit, but just pull it back together so that it's laying the way that you want it to lay in the end, and then join to that top layer. So your middle layer, which you worked into the back loop only of your sunflower, that's going to be in the middle, sandwiched in between the top layer of the sunflower and the new piece that we're working. There's the petals sandwiched in between there. And I'm going to pull up a loop here. If you look from the front side, your single crochets are joining those petals together there. So there's nothing joining that middle layer, but it's just going to sit sandwiched in between there, and then the single crochets are joining the front layer and the back layer. I'm going to continue working all the way around. Once I get down here and I join to my last chain space, there's going to be a space in there, and I slip stitch join here to the beginning. There's going to be a space left here. And that's where you can turn your work inside out, weave in your ends. But before you do that, you'll want to try it on your flower stem to see how it fits. Here's my last double crochet of the last petal. I'm going to slip stitch join to the stitch of the previous round. So here's our chain one from our current round. Right underneath that is the first stitch from the previous round. That's where I'm going to slip stitch the same way as I did with my sunflower. And I'm going to pull up a loop so I don't lose this. This is where I was saying that there's a hole here that you can turn your work inside out and weave in your ends. Before you do that, you can grab your flower, put that hole that I just showed you over the stem of your sunflower, and sit your sunflower upright. I can't see it on camera if I do that, so I'm just going to hold it this way. But this is how it's going to sit, and we're just going to seam the sunflower onto the stem. So if you're happy with this and how your sunflower is sitting, you can go ahead and weave in your ends if you haven't done that. And because the dirt isn't permanently put in your cup, you can pull it out and arrange it however you want. So like this is the back of my cup. I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to turn my cup around so that the sunflower would be facing the front of the cup. But the nice thing about this layer that we added is that even the back looks pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and fasten this off here. I'm going to pull it off my stem. Pull up on that loop to break it. I have some green strands left that need to be weaved in as well as my last brown tail. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that.
All right, now I'm ready to attach my sunflower. I have threaded the tapestry needle with the tail end that I fastened off from the flower. I'm going to stitch it onto the top of the stem. Make sure you put this inside your cup and see how it's gonna sit so that you can stitch it on the way that you want. I'm gonna stitch it right above where my first leaf is on the right. That row above, that's where I'm gonna stitch it on. And I'm gonna do it with the point like as centered as possible in there. From the back side here where my tail end is coming out of, I'm just going to weave through several of the stitches and I'm going to keep it in the yellow. So instead of going into the green right here, I'm going to go underneath the last double crochet there and push it all the way through to the front layer. and it's coming out in the same spot over here. Then I'm gonna go into the next stitch and push it all the way through to the back. And I just want it to come out in the yellow fabric. That way the yellow strand doesn't show through on the green. Okay, then put it into your cup and make sure it is standing and the way that you want before you weave in your ends because you can add extra stitches here. You can also take out your stitches if you need to redo it. When I do my stitches, I like to do it into the stitch, not into the V shape here, but behind it into the actual stitch itself. It just adds a little bit more support there. It's a little bit more flimsy if you just pick up one of the legs of the V shape. I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way back through for extra support here at the stitching and then I'm going to weave in my ends. And here is my little flower in the cup. Guys, thanks so much for watching my video. I'll leave the link to this pattern in the description box below. Please smash that like button and hit subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video.